What birth is like in the United States right now is absolutely interventionist. We don't have normal birth in my country anymore. I can say that with some authority. We have done major surveys of women, of Harris Poll style surveys called Listening to Women that are conducted by Childbirth Connection, a birth activist group in New York. And um, all, all the women interviewed, maybe 3% of them had normal births. So, you know, in hospitals, I mean, the only place you're going to find normal in the sense of uninterventionist, spontaneous birth in the United States today is at home or in birth centers, plus 3% in hospitals. Everybody else has highly interventionist births, everybody. Doctors in my country don't even know what normal birth is anymore because they never see it. Nurses don't know what it is, and even nurse midwives barely know what it is. They're trained in it in theory, but they hardly ever get to see it. If you do want a normal birth in a U.S. hospital, your best bet is with a U.S. nurse midwife because they at least try to maintain some semblance of normality in birth and they try to understand the normal physiology of birth. Doctors really have no education in the normal physiology of birth because they never see normal birth, nor do they have a value on it. They think that mechanizing birth and doing a lot of cesareans is, is safer and better. That's how they're trained. Unfortunately, as they get trained more and more in cesareans, they are being de-skilled in other areas. American obstetricians no longer know how to assist a breech birth vaginally, or how to use the vacuum extraction barely, or how to use forceps, which can be very useful at times to avoid cesareans. But now instead of going for the vacuum extraction or the forceps delivery, if you have a lot of skill with forceps, you tend not to do much harm with those forceps. But doctors aren't even bothering with the forceps anymore. They just go straight to the cesarean. So of course, we're now at a 34% cesarean rate in my country, and we have hospitals with 50 and 60% cesarean rates, which 10 years ago, I would have said, I don't think we're ever gonna get there. You know, we had such a strong activist birth movement in the United States, and we did such a good job in the 80s and 90s of the 70s, 80s, and early 90s of recovering VBAC. And because back in the, in the 50s and 60s, the rule was once a cesarean, always a cesarean. But, um, and, it, and it wasn't that bad in those days because in 1970 in the U.S., we had only a 6% cesarean rate. So once a cesarean, always a cesarean was bad for that 6% of women, but most women didn't have cesareans, so it wasn't that big a deal. Well, in 1985, Nancy Weiner Cohen published Silent Knife, which was um, the, the, the voices of those 6% of women who were having cesareans. And then which by, the, by 1985, it was higher than that already. Um, uh, by then it was 23 or 24 percent. Um, and so once Nancy Weiner published that book and we had a, a name for it, VBAC, Vaginal Birth After Cesarean, that book was the catalyst for a wave of birth activism around restoring vaginal birth after cesarean or, or getting rid of the once a cesarean, always a cesarean rule. By then it had become really important to try to do that because as I said before, in 1970 in the U.S. our cesarean rate was 6 percent. By 1980, the cesarean rate was 23%. It jumped that much in one decade, 6 to 23%, primarily, I believe, because of the introduction of the electronic fetal monitor into American hospitals. The monitor was invented in 1970 by an American physician, an obstetrician named Edward Hohn, H-O-N. He invented it because he thought if he could show if he could find a machine that would show that the baby's heart was fine and the mother's contractions were strong, that he could prevent interventions in labor because the machine would show good outcomes, good, good process most of the time. Well, once the machine got introduced into every hospital birth, it had exactly the opposite effect. Too much information is provided by the electronic fetal monitor, or over here you might call it the CTG. Um, it records every sign of every fetal heart rate deceleration and every contraction of the mothers. And it's because babies' hearts naturally decelerate during labor, especially during strong contractions. If you don't know that, if you don't see everyone, it's, you're less likely to get alarmed. So we have four decades of evidence now that nurses or midwives or even doctors auscultating with the stethoscope or the fetoscope to hear the fetal heartbeat 
and the, the and note that every 20 minutes is much more effective than having the mother continuously on the electronic monitor in, in terms of improving outcomes. We have four decades of evidence that show us that being on the monitor does not improve outcomes in any way. All it does is raise the cesarean rate. Why does it do that? Because if you see every deceleration, you start to freak out and you go, oh my God, you know, the baby's in distress and you rush off for a cesarean that wasn't necessary and you deliver by an unnecessary cesarean of baby with an APGAR of 10 because the baby was fine all along. You know, that's what birth is like in the United States today.